Father, we worship you. Yes, Lord. You, Lord, you are worthy. Oh, no one can worship you fully. Yes, Lord. For all the things you've done. that part again.
to you, Jesus. God's presence this morning. So I want you to turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, what are you thankful for? Tell your neighbor, what are you thankful for? I'm thankful for life. I'm thankful for God's grace. Hallelujah. See, I come before you today and there's just one thing that I want to say. You say, thank you Lord. We just want to say we're grateful. You 
us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then say, and if our God. Oh, oh, oh. 
bless your redeemer. Eka so venda vela kopesa. Enda vai la kopendes konde beriata. Let us kotande ve kopai lena kaile. Raba baba koski vande vela kosi ata. Era na kosi ana ele. Esha na na kosi vela ne ya. Esha na na kosi vela na ina kope la kosi ata. You are the reason, Jesus. And for this reason, we are gathered here today. For the reason of the cross, oh God. We are gathered here today. For the reason of your death, your burial, and your resurrection, Jesus. We are the life today. Father, we worship you, Jesus. Oh, Kashana Kobelene. Oh, Jesus. We give you praise, oh God.
good morning. Before we take our seats this morning, um, I just want us to pray a simple prayer. The Apostle Paul in his letter to the Ephesians, in Ephesians 1, 17 and 18, I want us to pray that prayer this morning because sometimes we come to church and it feels like we're doing something we do every Sunday. Oh, we're here again. Let's just mark the register. We've done it. What are we going to have for brunch? You know, but today I want us to personalize this prayer and ask that today as we receive the word, as we worship, that the eyes of our understanding will be filled with light, that that which God has prepared for each and every one of us today, that we will not miss it, that that word that is coming, that instruction, that that word of direction that we require to live the lives of victory for which Christ came, that we will receive it today, that we won't miss it in the nuances of here we are again, just doing the same thing, but we're not because the presence of the living God, the one that never changes is with us. Amen. So Ephesians 1, let's read from verse 17 and let's pray as a prayer together that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of my understanding being enlightened that I may know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And we have prayed this in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Holy Trinity. Before you sit, please say hello to someone next to you. Welcome them to church. Good morning, good morning. It is Thanksgiving. We have pause. Someone said good morning to me too. <laughs> good morning. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. And if you're worshiping with us for the first time, online or on site, can I ask you to please indicate? If you're worshiping with us for the first time online, please use the hashtag first timers and kindly fill out the Google form. We'd like to get to know you better. Thank you for joining us. If you're worshiping with us on site for the first time, can I ask you to put your hand up? I can see someone already, so I, I was about to call you out. <laughs> I can see a couple of ladies over there. Please welcome them to Holy Trinity Lagos. Please give them a warm welcome so they come back next Sunday. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. We thank you for coming into the presence of the Lord with us. Amen. This morning, hmm, what will you do with 15 more? In fact, I'm glad we prayed that prayer that the eyes of our understanding be filled with light because I've been trying to decipher this one, Pastor Ayo. <laughs> We're looking forward to the message this morning. What will you do with 15 more? But the bishop is going to break it down for us. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Ayo. We look forward to it. Thank you for lending yourself to the Holy Spirit. We look forward to your word. Shall I invite us to rise up as we take the opening hymn, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. Amen. Father, life he tends and spares. 
angels help us to adore Him. Today's Bible reading will be taken from 2 Kings 20, verses 1 to 6 and 12 to 19. We'll be reading from the NLT version. And it reads, About that time, Ezekiah became deadly ill, and the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to visit him. He gave the king this message. This is what the Lord says. Set your affairs in order, for you are going to die. You will not recover from this illness. When Hezekiah heard this, he turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. Remember, O Lord, how I have always been faithful to you and have served you single-mindedly, always doing what pleases you. Then he broke down and wept bitterly. But before Isaiah had left the middle courtyard, the, this message came to him from the Lord. Go back to Hezekiah, the leader of my people. Tell him, this is what the Lord, the God of your ancestor David, David, says. I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will heal you and three days from now, you will get out of bed and go to the temple of the Lord. I will add 15 years to your life and I will rescue you and this city from the king of Assyria. I will defend this city for my honor and for the sake of my servant, David. Soon after this, Merodach Baladan, son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent Hezekiah his best wishes and a gift, for he had heard that Hezekiah had been very sick. Hezekiah received the Babylonian envoys and showed them everything in his treasure houses, the silver, the gold, the spices, and the aromatic oils. He also took them to see his armory and showed them everything in his royal treasuries. There was nothing in his palace or kingdom that his guy did not show them. Then Isaiah the prophet went to King Hezekiah and asked him, what did these men, those men want? Where were they from? Hezekiah replied, they came from the distant land of Babylon. What did they see in your palace? Isaiah asked. They saw everything, Hezekiah replied. I showed them everything. I showed them everything I own, all my royal treasuries. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, listen. Listen to this message from the Lord. The time is coming when everything in your palace, all the treasuries stored up by your ancestors until now, will be carried off to Babylon. Nothing will be left, says the Lord. Some of your very sons, your very own sons, will be taken away into exile. They will become Enoch's who will serve in the palace of Babylon's king. This is the word of the Lord. church good morning all right so it's time for our tithes and offerings um we have different ways that we can give that the ushers are passing around with envelopes and then we also have the pos at the end of the hall and also we have um the uh account details should actually be scrolling on the screen now okay 
right, so we also have some announcements. As usual, every Tuesday we have a Matthews Club meetings. Um, we have it online. So to all the new guests, welcome. Um, and if you haven't also joined, please, you know, you can also meet the admin guests. So you can be added to any of the, you know, um, Matthews Club. Or you can meet me. We have our Matthews Club as well. So <laughs> you can also meet me and we'll hook you up. All right. Um, this, this, in this past month, we've been studying the book of Esther and it has really been amazing. We have... We start our meetings at 7 p.m. and I tell you it's amazing, it's engaging, it's an opportunity to deep dive into the word, you know, so please join the Matthews Club. Um, we also have our midday prayers, uh, 12 noon every weekday and it runs for 20 minutes. It's intense prayers, um, if you're able to, you know, make that time out to join, please do so during the week it runs from Mondays to sorry from Tuesdays to Fridays 12 noon to 12 20 p.m. Uh, and for you to get notified you need to be part of the HTL uh, WhatsApp group so please if, if you're not a, if you're not part of that you can also meet the admin you know so that they can include you into the group um, yay on the 19th of November we have a service of hymns it's amazing, right? So save the date. We will be having a service of hymns on, on the 19th of November. That is the third Sunday in November. Please invite people to the service. Last week we had um, invitation cards shared, so I hope that you spent some time to share it out to people. But do we have any more? Do we have any more to give to we do okay all right so that will go around okay then um on the 12th of november we will be just join us next week sunday for a special time which is the 12th of november special time of the word and worship here at hcl don't come alone invite your loved ones and friends to service okay don't come alone it starts at 9 a.m where we have our worship, praise and worship, and then we flow into the service. Also, if you're not following us on our social media handles, please do so. Like, share, engage if you can, and also share our, you know, handles with other people, okay? Because we're trying to grow our audience. And then, after service, don't be so fast to rush off. We have um, some entertainment, you know, item seven. Yes, for us, so please just enjoy, okay? All right, thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many people know that whatever he does with us is all right? He has our total trust. Like Hezekiah. Whatever God did with him. If you gave him another 15, if he didn't, it's okay. And this morning, when there's not going to be a special number, it's going to be an everybody's number this morning. Because our what we're saying is that God, you are my God. So this morning, everybody, thou who knowest. My beginning, sing along. Thou who created the plan, who orchestrated, who orchestrated my life's journey. My life's journey. Say, God, you God, are my God. You are my God. One more time, everybody, say. Who knowest? Who thou who knowest my beginning? You who created the plan. Thou who created the plan. You're the one who orchestrated. Who orchestrated my life's journey. My life's journey. Say, God, you are God, my God. You are. 
of decisions. God of decisions. You decide whether I have to do or not. You ordain my way.
Somebody say to yourself, give you praise, Jesus. God, I will honor you. I will celebrate you, God. I will celebrate you in the good times and the bad times. When I have and when I don't have, God. I will celebrate you, God. I will not celebrate myself. I will celebrate you. Morning, church. Can we give them a round of applause again? Thank you. Right. Good morning once again, and um, thank you all for coming to church this morning, and thank you, the vicars, for giving me another opportunity to speak. Um, to the house. Can we just bow our head down in prayer, please? Heavenly Father, we pray this morning that you open our ears and open our minds and give us the grace to become more like you. Help us to fulfill purpose. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, um, I was hoping that the title of the message will get people to come to church this morning. And the church is full today. I don't know whether it's because of the title or just happened to be the case. And um, obviously, from the Bible reading, the cat is now out of the bag. People know what I'm talking about when I said, what will you do with 15 more? But let's just start it at a, a very simple level. To you ladies in the house, if your husband came back home one day from work and he brought back 15 pairs of shoes for you, how would you feel? I know initially some may ask, what have you done? What are you trying to bribe me for? Oh, no. And you guys too. I mean, if you go home and your wife had bought you 15 new shirts or 15 ties, or she has sewn 15 trads for you, different colors, different, you know. We will be wondering how much is this going to cost me? <laughs> but beyond that, beyond the getting to terms with, they are coming to terms with the gift, I bet the next thing you will do is you will call your best friend and say, Guess what happened? This man or this woman surprised me and gave me 15 days or gave me, you know, you will share it. You will share the news. You'll be excited. So, in our story today, you got from the Bible reading, Hezekiah was given 15 more years. And like everybody would imagine if you were on the verge of death, you know, the priest, the prophet, who had always prophesied and he had come out true, has come to you to say, oh boy, sort your house out. You are going to die. You know? Then he comes back and says, the Lord says, I'm giving you 15 more years. You'll be excited. In fact, what happened was Hezekiah asked for some evidence. You know? Um, we didn't read that bit because it would have made the Bible reading too long. He actually asked for some evidence. He said, okay, what do you want God to do? He said, do you want the shadow to go forward 10 steps 
or go backwards. And say, ah, shadow always goes forward 10 steps. So God should make shadow go back 10 steps, meaning turn back time. Okay? And that's what happened. Now, there are three questions we're going to answer today. First question was, who is this guy that God decided to give 15 more years? Right? Who is he? Right? Second question is, why did God decide to give him 15 more years? Right? And then the final question is, what did he do with the 15 years that God gave him? Okay? Now, by way of context, we're going to be looking at scriptures in 2 Kings and 2 Chronicles. Okay? Now, it's talking about the same period. In fact, you would know that, or you should know, that 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings tells the story of Israel from when Samuel became the prophet all the way through to Saul, then David and all the other kings and then the splitting of the, of the nations of Israel until they all went into captivity. Well, Chronicles also tells the same story. But they're telling it from two perspectives. Right? Samuel and kings are telling the story of Israel from a political, historic um, perspective. Right? But Chronicles is telling the story from a religious history perspective. Right? Another way of saying that is that the kings are talking from a prophetic, moral viewpoint, whilst Chronicles is talking from a priestly spiritual viewpoint remember we have a body so we are physical but we are spirits right so there's two dimensions to us right so by looking at the story from both sides we'll get a, a richer picture of what was really going on so that's the context now the backstory okay the backstory is that Hezekiah was the king of Judah. Judah was the smaller of the tribes of Israel when Israel broke up into two. Ten tribes went one way, two tribes went the other. Okay? He was the twelfth in line, or the twelfth king of Judah. And his father was Ahaz. And five kings after him, even Judah, went into captivity. Now, before I go into the story now, into this backstory, I just want to remind us of something else. And that is this. What was the purpose of the kingdom of Israel? Why did God create the kingdom of Israel? What purpose was the kingdom of Israel designed to serve in God's plan? And the answer to that question is in Genesis chapter 12, verse 2. Can we have it? And this is God speaking to Abraham. And he said to him, I will make you a great nation... I will bless you and make you famous and you will be a blessing to others. So God said to a man that God called, out of you I'm going to build a nation. Right? And that nation is going to be a blessing to all the other nations. Right? So the answer to the question, why did God set up Israel? is that God set up Israel to showcase God. It was meant to reflect God's glory. God built up a people to show the world that being in covenant with him was the best way to go 
and he was trying to demonstrate to the world what being in covenant with him entailed as well as the benefits that accrue from it okay so israel was meant to be some nation that told all other nations how to be okay so backstory i'm going to now go through the spiritual description of the reign of Hezekiah's father, Ahaz. And you will find that in 2 Chronicles chapter 28 from verse 22. And I read, Even during the time of trouble, King Ahaz continued to reject the Lord. He offered sacrifices to the gods of Damascus who had defeated him. For he said, since these gods helped the kings of Aram, they will help me too, if I sacrifice to them. But instead, they led to his ruin and the ruin of Judah. The king took various articles from the temple of God and broke them into pieces. He shut the doors of the Lord's temple so that no one could go and worship there. He set up altars to pagan gods in every corner of Jerusalem. He made pagan shrines in all the towns of Judah for offering sacrifices to other gods. In this way, he aroused the anger of the Lord, the God of his ancestors. And this is how it ends. It says, the rest of the events of Ahaz's reign and everything he did from beginning to end are recorded in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. Right? When Ahaz died, he was buried in Jerusalem, but not in the royal cemetery of the kings of Judah. Then his son, Hezekiah, became the next king. So he was so bad that even the, the, the courts felt we cannot bury this guy where we bury all our kings. That's how bad he was. And here is a, a, a little lesson out of that. Right? As God's chosen, you know, every born again believer is God's chosen. Right? As God's chosen, tribulations are meant to strengthen us. They are supposed to make us run towards God not run away from God. You see, last week, Pastor Femi spoke to us about living water. And was basically expanding on the fact that the technology for our enablement is the Holy Spirit. Right? We need to be plugged in. So God was looking for his people to plug into him. And then he will take them through whatever it is they were going through and bring them out at the other side. So that was the legacy of Ahaz. Now let's see what was recorded about Hezekiah when he became king. Again, from the spiritual perspective. So 2 Chronicles 29 from verse 3. It reads, In the very first month of the first year of his reign, Hezekiah reopened the doors of the temple of the Lord and repaired them. He summoned the priests and the Levites to meet him at the courtyard east of the temple. He said to them, Listen to me, you Levites. Purify yourself and purify the temple of the Lord, the God of your ancestors. Remove all the defiled things from the sanctuary. Our ancestors were unfaithful and did what was evil in the sight of the Lord our God. They abandoned the Lord and his dwelling place. They turned their backs on him. So the first thing Hezekiah did was he turned people back to God. Turned people back to God up and down the land. Got rid of all the shrines, got rid of everything, got the priests to sanctify themselves so that they could go back to God. And after a time, the raiding armies of the Assyrians now started to target Judah. 
And the king sent a letter to Hezekiah, basically telling him that it's your turn. And you look on. So what did Hezekiah do when he received that letter? This time, I'm going to go to the historic perspective of it, which is in 2 Kings 19 from verse 14. It reads, After Hezekiah received the letter from the messengers and read it, he went up to the Lord's temple and spread it out before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed this prayer before the Lord. O Lord, God of Israel, you are enthroned between the mighty cherubim. You alone are God of all kingdoms of the earth. You alone created the heavens and the earth. Bend down, O Lord, and listen. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see. Listen to Sennacherib's words of defiance against the living God. It is true, Lord, that the kings of Assyria have destroyed all these nations and they have thrown the gods of these nations into fire and burned them. But of course, the Assyrians could destroy them because they were not gods at all. Only idols of wood and stone shaped by human hands. Now, Lord our God, rescue us from his power. Then all the kingdoms of the earth will know that you alone, O Lord, are God. By that prayer, it was clear that Hezekiah understood the role of the nation of Israel. He understood why God created them. And basically, he was calling God to stand up and do what only he could do. You know, Daniel 11.32 says in the B part, they that know their God shall be strong and they shall do exploits. So Hezekiah was able to do what he did because he knew God. But it didn't stop there. Hezekiah spoke to his people. He encouraged his people. And in 2 Chronicles 30, 32, verse 7, this was his message to his people. Right? Be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid or discouraged because the king of Assyria or his mighty army, because of the king of Assyria or his mighty army, for there is a power greater on our side. He may have a great army, but they are merely men. We have the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles for us. The Bible records Hezekiah's words greatly encouraged his people. You know, and it's reminiscent of the story of David and Goliath. He knew who he was. He knew his God. And on the back of that, he could encourage his people. And really, that is the definition of faith. Faith is not what you say. Faith is what you do in the time of trouble. God doesn't need to ask how much faith you have. He can see how much faith you have the way you choose to respond to a problem that is before you. Hezekiah responded with faith. And in 2 Kings 19.35, God came through. The Bible records, that night, the angel of the Lord went out to the Assyrian camp and killed 185,000. Note, Judah didn't need to go to war. He didn't send anybody out. God, by himself, went out and wiped out the Assyrian army. The net result was the rest of them went home, their king got killed, and that was that. So that's the backstory that brings us to the sermon or the, the Bible passage we read this morning, which is the story of the 15 more years. So I said there were three questions we were going to answer. The first one was, who was this guy, Hezekiah? 
Answer? He was a good king who was obedient to God. He was faithful to God because he turned Israel back to God by his own actions. He trusted God. He demonstrated his faith by going to God in time of trouble. And God considered him faithful. So that's who Hezekiah was. Second question. Why did God give him 15 more years? Again, we've seen the answer. He had proven himself to be reliable. He was a blessing to his people. And God gave him 15 more years for him to have the opportunity to be more of a blessing to his people. So before I go into the third question, I want us to just pause a bit and reflect. And this is how we're going to do the reflection. It's going to be personal. We're not going to, I'm not going to ask anybody. I'm not going to call anybody out. But I just want you to ponder these questions. Question one. Who are you? You can ask your neighbor, who are you? You can ask yourself, who am I? And when I say, who are you or who am I? I'm not saying, what is your name? Where do you come from? No, no, no. That's not the question. The question is, in the context of the purpose for which God created you, who are you? What have you done? Or what are you doing? Right? Right? What are you doing to change the world around you? How have you impacted the world around you? You know, this year has been a tough year. Yes, we all know that. But in the toughness of this year, how have you been? Have you been so focused on your own issues that you will struggle to look back from January to 1st of November to find where you have been a pillar to someone else a blessing to someone else support to someone else encouragement to someone else in the mandate that God gave you personally how have you fared You know, they say that the President Kennedy said to Americans, you know, instead of thinking, what will America do for you? You should ask yourself, what will you do for America? So I can give you two variations of that question. Instead of asking, what will Nigeria do for you? What are you doing for Nigeria? with the skill, the ability, everything that God has placed inside of you. But that's on the physical level. Remember, when we're looking at Israel, we're looking at it from two sides, have you? The physical and the spiritual. So, on the physical level, yes, what have you done? What have you done for the world around you? Now, let's look at the spiritual side. What have you done for God this year? How have you impacted God's plan for humanity this year? And there are so many things you could have done. Yes, you could be active in church. Yes, you could get to know God more. But you know there's scripture that says, it is by your works that I will understand your faith. So where have you called the power of God in you into play in the world at large? So, that's just for us to ponder and take home and think about it the rest of the year so that we can turn a new leaf. Because, speaking for myself, my scorecard isn't great. And I'm hoping that the Holy Spirit will help me to improve on my scorecard. And I pray the same for each and every one of you. 
So now let's go to the last part of the question. What did Hezekiah do with his 15 additional years? And I just want to take us to the second half of the Bible reading. In, from verse 12, it says, you know, the king of Babylon sent Hezekiah his best wishes and a gift. For he had heard that Hezekiah had been sick. Hezekiah received the envoy and showed them everything in his treasure house, his silver, his gold, and all the, you know, we read all of that bit. Then Isaiah the prophet came to him and said, what did you show them? And he said, oh, I showed them everything. And Isaiah was annoyed. And then he went on to tell him that everything you showed them, they are going to take away. And not only are they going to take away everything you showed them, even your children are going to become slaves and eunuchs to the Babylonians. And I've always wondered, what was that about? What, what did the guy do wrong? Until I went to look at the spiritual side. And the spiritual viewpoint of this same history, this bit that we just looked at, you will find in 2 Chronicles 32 from verse 24. In fact, it's only two verses. And this is what it says. About this time, Hezekiah became deadly ill. He prayed to the Lord who healed him and gave him a miraculous sign. But Hezekiah did not respond appropriately to the kindness shown him and he became proud. So the Lord's anger came against him and against Judah and Jerusalem. If you are wondering what happened, verse 31 tells us. When the ambassadors arrived from Babylon to ask about the remarkable events that are taking place in the land, the Bible records God withdrew from Hezekiah in order to test him and see what was really in his heart. So, let me explain what was happening here. Now, the Babylonians were advanced. They were not just advanced in military warfare and all of that. They were advanced in the occult. So, what had happened was that, you know, in, in Matthew 2, 1 and 2, I think, the Bible tells us there were these wise men that saw the stars and from seeing the stars they knew that the savior had been born then they went to look for the savior okay what was happening here was that the babylonians knew that time shifted backwards so they knew time had shifted backwards and it coincided with the king of judah who was seriously sick. And the next thing they knew was that the guy was well and up and about. That is why they went to see him. They went to see him to find out what happened. And going back to where we started, what did I say the purpose of Israel was? to showcase God's glory to showcase God this was the opportunity for Judah to showcase God this was Hezekiah's opportunity to tell the Babylonians about the God of Judah that was what he was supposed to do that was why God gave him 15 more years. But alas, what did he do? He started showing them his riches. Matthew 6, 21 tells us, wherever your treasure is, 
there the desires of your heart will be also. At the beginning, I said to you, when something, when you get a, an unexpected gift, what do you do? You tell people about it. Now, he got an unexpected gift. Instead of talking about the gift, that's why the Bible describes it as pride. He was busy showing them all the things that they have. All his armory, all his gold, all his silver. That was what he showed. And that really is the message. At the beginning, I asked the question, what will you do with 15 more? Okay, let me ask the question completely. What will you do with 15 more years? And if anybody in this auditorium is anything like me, it is an impossible question to answer. Why is it an impossible question to answer? It's an impossible question to answer because I have never considered my time on earth in the context of God's kingdom or God's glory or eternity. Psalm 90 verse 12 says, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Here's the point. We can't lose sight of the important things. There are two dimensions to life. The physical dimension and the spiritual dimension. All of us, let me say all of us, most of us are so caught up in the physical that we do not give enough thought at all to the spiritual. God created us for a purpose. Every day is a gift. God can call time on anybody at any time. So, what are you doing with the 15 more that you have? Or the 20 more that you have? or the 25 more that you have, well, whatever time you've got left, the question is, what are you going to do with it? I also want to encourage us. Because Luke 13, 6 to 9 was the parable of the unfruitful fig tree, where the master wanted to chop down the tree because it wasn't productive and the vine dresser said give us one more year we're going to put fertilizer we're going to do this, we're going to do that and we expect it to bear fruit well fertilizer in our context is the word of God, it's church it's all the things that we do Matthew's club, all those things you know raising our consciousness, raising our awareness about the fact that we need to focus on the spiritual. So, this message is not to just beat you down. It's just to call us back to action. And the last scripture to encourage us is in 2 Peter chapter 3 from verse 8. And this is what it says. But you must not forget this one thing, dear friends. A day is like a thousand years to the Lord, and a thousand years is like a day. The Lord isn't really being slow about his promise, as some people think. No, he's being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. But the day of the Lord will come as unexpectedly as a thief. Then the heavens will pass away with a terrible noise 
and the very, very elements themselves will disappear in fire and the earth and everything in it will be found to deserve judgment. I don't need to remind us of Matthew 25, 31 to 40, which is when Jesus was talking about judgment of nations and he said some will be sheep and some will be goats and he said to the sheep, I will say, come in. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. Meaning, you did stuff with your time. There are three points I want us to leave today with. First point. Every second we are alive is not promised. It's a gift from God. We need to use it to share the gospel of God. Two, pride is offensive to God. The last time I stood on this pulpit, which was a couple of weeks back, I reminded us of Mark 4.19, which talks about cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches, and lust for other things. Jesus gave that parable. He said, those are the things that stop us from being fruitful. The issues of the day are what get in the way of us being fruitful. Worrying about stuff. How do I pay salaries? How do I pay school fees? How do I do this? How do I get married? We're so worried about the earthly stuff that we forget. And the third thing I want to say to us is that we need individually and collectively to continue to pray without season that we will not fail the test remember the bible said god stepped back from hezekiah to see how he will perform in the test may we not fail the test but also remember this jesus christ the son of god after fasting 40 days when you know that he will be strong in the spirit that is when Satan came to test him so we too can't be found sleeping on our posts here endeth the message shall we pray please Dear Lord, you have made you too small in our eyes, O oh Lord. Please forgive us. We hear so much about doom and gloom and spend too much of our time acting as though you are unable to help us. But our dear Father, we know and we can see our wrong now. Please forgive us. Heal our hearts and show yourself strong. Help us to see that you have brought us this far to show your glory in the world around us. We appreciate you, Lord. Be magnified in our eyes, in our hearts, and our minds. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. encourage Pastor Ayo for that word. I learned something very powerful today for the Bible scholars. Now we know why the Babylonians came. Uh, because God wanted his king to make a demonstration of his power and to confront the ruling powers of the day. God's manifold wisdom is basically what Hezekiah should have revealed to the Babylonians. But instead, he showed them his swag. 
Check out, check out my Rolex. <laughs> look at this thing. Look at all these things that we have. And that is the source of pride. But what is interesting was that what God could not accomplish in him, he accomplished it in Daniel. Because that's what Daniel did. Every situation, Daniel was able to, in the midst of the ruling power of the day, to show that God's power was so mighty. Lord, thank you so much for that word. Some notes that I made here, our lives should always be a signpost. We are pointing to God always. Um, what will I do with 15 years? Hmm. It's a very deep one. Though. And my prayer is that my life would continue to reflect God's glory because he created me and the way I summarize is when I succeed he smiles because he's there saying yes you know this is why you are here so my prayer is every single thing that God has placed in us that we will express it to the fullest because when you see a flower that's a bud it's not a flower yet right until it flowers that's when, the, that, that's when the glory of the Lord is revealed in the flower. So may we all flower in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Thanksgiving service today. Um, we're going to now do our Thanksgiving thing. <laughs> so I want you to do your jiggy, do your footwork. I have the best footwork, by the way. You all know. Nobody here has tested my footwork. I want us to dance. And in the back of our mind, just know that we are expressing, we are expressing the fullness of God's creative power in ourselves. So the ushers will lead us. They will tell you which way to come. If you need an envelope, please just raise your hand up and it will be sorted. And Trinity Symphony will give us something wonderful to dance to. of my life I praise everything that I have now you gave to me Papa. Okay. Lord I say for your love I'm grateful Jesse you love me plenty you came to die for me Jehovah Ralph Jehovah Nisi I am that I am oh oh I searched around there's no one else like you Lion of Judah you're the man
Say, Father, thank you. Thank you for the joy in our hearts. Thank you that we're able to give. Thank you that you have healed us, that you're healing us, that you're giving us divine health. Thank you for the hearts that I've given this morning. And Lord, we dedicate all the offering to you. We ask that you will help us to administer wisely. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. amen and amen. You may be seated for a moment. We have um, a closing hymn. Yeah. Which should be upstanding for the closing hymn. <laughs> the Lord saying that, is anything too hard for me? Is anything too hard for me? When you hear a message like that, you know it's a message of rededication. God is able to do what you're asking. It's just that your heart needs to be right. Amen? And so as we close, actually before we close, sorry, um, let's remember that we have Matthew's Club, if you haven't joined, and if you want to serve the Lord in this house in any capacity, 
please go and put your name down at the desk over there. See Omotayo. We need more people to sing. We need more people to serve. And if you have anything on your own heart that we haven't thought about, then please serve in that capacity. Service of hymns, which is on the 19th. If you have a hymn on your heart, please see Uzo. She only has five hymns at the moment. So there are more. There's more um, opportunity for your hymns to be, to be um, heard. Let us bow our heads as we rededicate our lives, as we commit ourselves to the Lord afresh. Father, thank you for such a powerful message. You are speaking very clearly that you want to take us higher, but you want us to be wise in how we use the time that is left. Thank you for blessing us with your presence today. And as we step into the week, we will not forget what we've heard. But in that spirit, we will move forward. And you will bless us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Have something to eat before you go. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.